What is up, Truth Seekers? This is Ben back on the rant wagon with more scorching hot takes to pour all over those delusion adult dukes of disruption, Harry and Meghan. And let me tell you, the latest scandal brewing has me absolutely cackling over their unbiased temerity. So by now, I'm sure you've all seen the reports about the Sussexes staring yet another hornet's nest by randomly jetting off to Nigeria in the coming weeks, right? Just casually swan diving into the drama pool by accepting some suspicious cultural tour invitation from the country's defense minister. So I know you guys are super excited to hear more about this, but before we get started, I would like to say a personal massive thank you for your love and support. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, guys, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button now. And don't forget to press the all important bell icon. Now let's get started. We're here determined to share the real story. So now you'd think after the insufferable scrutiny and hostility they've endured over the past few years, Harry and Meg might try laying low for once and, you know, not continuously poke the eternally offended royal beast. But alas, our favorite ethnic Fludian D-listers simply cannot resist the incessant lure of manufactured outrage this time around. Their latest photo op charity, Ambush, has very predictably incited screeching accusations from all the usual salty conservative commentators like Tom Bauer and Phil Dampier. You'll never guess the explosive allegation these two cranky Karens are breathlessly lobbying. Apparently, the Sussex shenanigans are now some insidious plot to hijack the Commonwealth from actual royalists. I near did a spit take chugging my morning Earl Grey when I first read Tom Bauer unraveling that wild conspiracy yarn. According to his adult mind, Meghan and Harry's random Nigerian excursion is apparently the next escalating phase in their nefarious plot to pump up their publicity by exploiting every last ounce of residual clout from their estranged relatives. Call the authorities. These grifting grifters just won't stop usurping the crown. Not to be outdone, resident sourpuss Phil Dampier eagerly piled onto Bauer's lofty outrage by accusing the Sussexes of trying to set up a rival royal roadshow, complete with the unofficial diplomatic visits that could cause international incidents. Oh no, not the international offending royals again. Hide your pearls and small island nations, people. In Phil's adult fantasy world, Meghan and Harry have clearly decided... The only way to achieve relevance is by co-opting and supplanting the entire existing royal family commonwealth leadership structure with their own MAGA red hat wearing junta. First, they came for the line of succession and I said nothing. Listen, I'll be the first to admit that Harry and especially Meghan have increasingly crossed obnoxious lines with their endless limelight chasing since moving stateside. Time and time again, they've proven themselves hopelessly addicted to generating headlines and sparking furors for the fresh batches of oxygen and clout. Lord knows I've devoted my fair share of viral episodes to roasting their absurd delusions of grandeur, fueling ridiculous stunts like Harry's laughable tell-all truth bombs. But are we really meant to take these ludicrously overblown hijacking accusations seriously? At a certain point, the conspiratorial ravings from the usual suspects commentators starts entering self-parody territory because, let's be real, outside the perpetually offended conservative sphere, literally no one is viewing Meghan and Harry's African tourism as some clandestine coup attempt against the crown. Most reasonable people can clearly see it's a desperate attempt to grab some relevance. Sure, but the Sussexes are not Machiavellian geniuses executing some master plan to steal King Charles' legitimacy in Commonwealth realms one photo up at a time. That would require basic competence. Suggesting these two flailing small fries have their guile or networks of influence to somehow overpower and disrupt the entire centuries on monarch is quite literally the textbook definition of an unhinged conspiracy theory about the only thing Meghan and Harry have proven capable of hijacking is throwing reckless truth bombs to desperately stay in the news cycle before their already expired 15 minutes of relevance crater into Harambe territory. Then again, perhaps that's exactly why Tom Bauer and these royal apologists are now forcibly escalating proceedings into a grievous offence against the crown itself. Think about it. For the past few years, Harry and Meghan's endless stunts have primarily just scandalized and annoyed the royal family at a personal level. 
No matter how many salacious reveals or petty tiffs, the broader institution and Commonwealth remained largely unscathed from their rabble-rousing. But now, with Sussexes actively expanding their self-serving, barnstorming efforts into new diplomatic minefields like Africa, well, a harsh overcorrection and scandal of historic treachery suddenly feels inevitable. Could you imagine the pearl-clutching mass aneurysms that would erupt if Meghan and Harry committed some wildly inappropriate faux pas? We're talking potentials to spark international racial reckonings to reopen old colonial wounds. That's why I suspect cunning narrators like Bauer are now opting to take the reckless usurper's angle, punching up the stakes for their mere personal palace drama to global diplomatic incidents, automatically reframing Harry and Meghan from annoying D-listers to destabilizing national security. Not only does that track harder with their increasingly grandiose martyr complexes, but it's fundamentally justifying treating these two as international menaces that must be handled harshly. Of course, the far more mundane truth is that Meghan and Harry's presence and antics will ultimately be harmless and inconsequential beyond dominating a few more news cycles. Can you really envision our favourite walking embodiment of absolute champagne liberal struggle tourism successfully inspiring international coups and uprisings. Still, no need to harsh Bowers and Dampier's blavating buzzkills by clinging onto the basic logic and reason. It's shrilly proclaiming the Sussexes as grave national security risks. Also, as comedic as their flailing bids for persecution clout have gotten, you have to respect Harry and Meghan's fundamental goal in the face of the escalating hostility. It's been, what, three years? of the nastiest, racist, vitriol and humiliating public face palms imaginable and still these two goofballs forge onward chasing the endlessly taunting social media endangerment dragon. At this stage, in their reputation demise, most self-respecting celebs would have long tapped out of the dignity immolating struggle game, but not our brave sufferers of such unmitigated bullying and injustice. Maybe it's straight-up delusion fueling their engine. Of course, strip away the persecution complexes, burning bridges and global gaslighting stunts, and you're still left with the sad reality that Meghan and Harry are now professional controversialists addicted to scandal. Their enrichment and fame narratives are predicated entirely on endlessly sparking public feuds with their former lives for relevance. So in that context, this latest Nigerian photo safari isn't some cloak and dagger or coup in the making. It's simply their desperate content droplets to quench the outrage cycle until the next brash headline chasing adventure. So what do you guys think about the news? Of course, let us know in the comments. We want to hear from you and we'll see you again for more epic royal news and analysis, guys. We'll see you again in the next video. Have a great day. Bye for now, folks.